So as we saw in theory, this book talks a lot about the value of backlinks. So now what we want to do is we want to see these backlinks. We're going to look at both Bing and Google to see where our backlinks are. My handout has where to go after you log in, where to see them. So we'll, we'll look at them together. If you don't have any, that's okay. Then I'll show you examples of what it looks like up here. So we'll, we'll look at the what, meaning what backlinks do we have, and then we'll look at the why, uh, you know, why are we getting them possibly, and then um, also the, the what of what to do with them. Once I know I've got good backlinks, well, good, what, but what more can I do about them? And if I've got bad backlinks, what do I do with those? So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into Bing. We'll do it the same way from last time. We'll do Bing, then Search Console, then Analytics. We'll go back to the website bing.com slash toolbox. Remember that is the direct link to go over to the webmaster tools for Bing. Take a moment to log in with the same information from last time. Let me give you a moment to sign in. Hopefully you don't get any troubles there, but go ahead and sign in and then we will we will go look at our content. So hopefully as you're logging in, I'll mention then that we saw this a bit last time. You're going to see various uh, general information here. You can have more than one website. Uh, I'm going to go to example of one of these clients. So on any one of these, you, if you've got more than one, just click on any one of your sites. If you've only got one site, just click on it. then various menu items on the left side, raw data over here. On my handout it says for the Bing section, under dashboard, so once you go into an actual site, this is the dashboard, you'll want to go then to reports and data, inbound links. So Bing calls it inbound links. Again, different terms. So under reports and data, inbound links. So you want to log in, go to dashboard, reports and data, and inbound links on the left side. This will show a general chart here of what amount of links you might have. If you've got data for it to show you, if it doesn't show you anything, just keep waiting and you'll get more data eventually. We will also then talk about, well, getting data via, I mean, getting traffic via social media and all of that. So it's sort of the chicken or the egg thing. Some of you might have some links already. 
but most of you probably will not because your website is so new or you just set this up recently. So if you don't get any data, that's okay. Just follow along for a moment. I've got this pretty much steady amount of links that, that are over to this site. If I scroll down, it goes into more detail. It shows these are the pages and these are the number of links to them. The number one page that gets the most links is the home page. 630 links that it counts. Second is this blog post on the Maguey plant. This is a... the Maguey plant is, is related to the agave plant. And uh, it's part of the flavoring of the food and it's to make an alcoholic beverage. So that one and this one about wheat, uh, this one about wheat la coche, another blog post, one about the menu, a link over to the history of the food in Spanish. So different links are going to those to those pages, and I can click specifically. Okay, show me the links that are going over to this catering page. You can click on the name or the number. SanDiegan.com. There's a few links from SanDiegan.com website over on their event menu. I can further click to view the original article. Barry Burn, this is San Diego. I know San Diego. Aquí este soco as seen on Travel Channel. They're putting our phone number, our address, our, our web link. Great. There's a write up about it other links. That's going back to the website. This one is going over to Zagat. A couple articles to Zagat. Seems to be a bit of a review. Different links. The locations. So it seems to be a really good article. A good article about the client. So we never asked to get reviewed there. We never paid them to get reviewed here. They created an article on their own linking back to our site. That photo, we shot it and it's on our site. And you think, they stole your photo. Yes and no. They did take our photo from our website, but that's fine. It's our photo. It shows off our product really well. And that's okay that they're using it on their site because this is still a big free advertisement back to us. So most of the time you're going to be okay with someone taking your content. Obviously, if your main content online is to sell your photography, that's not so good if people are taking your photos and putting them on your site. If your main content that you're selling online is, you know, your, your PowerPoint presentations, that's not good that someone is taking them and putting them on your site. But you do have to realize that when you put something online, it's very difficult to keep it safe. It's very difficult for, to prevent people to take it very difficult. There are plugins that are out there that you can activate that disable the right click. Because I can easily right click, save image. Right click, save presentation. Right click, download video. And there's plugins that will deactivate right click. But then, look at this. I just hacked in and saw all the code. Well, I didn't hack in, but I saw all the code. There's all their code. And if I know what I'm doing in their code, I can go into this directory that no other normal person would and look at their CSS code and find the address myself. There's no way, really, if someone's really determined, to prevent them from taking your content. So you have to be comfortable with the idea that your content will be quote-unquote stolen. But if it's content like your presentation that has a link back to your site, if it has a free 30-minute lecture as a preview of your two-hour-long lecture, fine. If it's something that benefits you to get to more people's attention, great. It's okay to, for it to be passed around. But you have to keep in mind that if you really don't want your stuff to be passed around, the short answer is don't put it online. Because someone will always figure out a way to take it. So here they've also got the YouTube video, one of our YouTube videos that's up on YouTube. And then this is, this is a link to the Facebook. They got the link from Facebook to, to share our Facebook on their website. No problem. This is still going to link back to our website. And there's our Twitter. So they're sort of like giving us a free portal of advertising. A, a few photos, addresses, and phone numbers, and 
and YouTube videos and all of that. Great, they're consolidating it all into here. San Diegan.com is a big name in San Diego um, journalism, so a good link. Uh, let me back up. Okay, what about this Magay plant link? We've got dnainfo.com, survivingmexico.com. Let's see what this DNA info is. So this is interesting. Um, this is an article about uh, seven new beer gardens um, in New York. Okay, so this is an article about beer gardens. And I noticed here, my analytics told me, on that website, the keyword magay, the anchor text, is what is the active link. Not the word barbacoa, not the word texcoco, nothing directly about the business is the keyword that is active. Magay is the keyword that's active. As the book said, don't worry that you're not getting your anchor text, that it's not your exact company name or keyword, as long as you've got any link from someone else's site. The Magay does happen to be one of the keywords of our site, but the point is that I was looking within the article, where does it say Texcoco? And I didn't see it. What I did see was, it mentioned over here that one of these beer gardens, um, Cantina Rooftop, one of their highlights is Barbacoa de Carnero, I don't know what that is, a maguey braised lamb shank with guajillo chile sauce, chicken, etc. So they're saying they're using maguey braised like our restaurant, like my client, and that's an active link back to the client's blog that explains what is maguey. Yes? And that's because that article LinkedIn was uh, linked in with the maguey, so it was Exactly. This article here, the author wrote something and they made that link active over to the client's blog post. Gotcha. Probably what they did was, okay, they wanted to research their, their article and they did a search on Google or Bing, whatever, what's a Magay plant? And maybe there's traffic over to that article of Magay plant from Bing. They found our article there and then he linked it on, he or she linked it on this, on this post here. And so this is DNA info. I've never heard of them, but you know they seem to be a rather professional-looking site with a lot of content um, and reviews and such. And even though this is not directly mentioning the restaurant or the food of, of the client, there is a link from theirs, their website to our website. Again, backlink. Uh, another good link back to the client. See another example. Let's see this one about the history. What's cookingamerica.com? Oh, this one's interesting. This one's a little bit more of the stealing it even more. It seems that they took a couple of the paragraphs of the original our original article, but then they say source, and it goes back to our address. You know, depending on your own inclination, this you might think this is too much. I'm gonna I'm gonna contact them and tell them to take it down. They stole it, or you might think, well, it's good enough that there's a link back to our original article. It's up to you to decide there. Uh, I personally wouldn't bother with trying to, you know, contact them to take it down or whatever. It's free. It's free advertising. Um, the website itself is not that professional. It looks like a small, you know, like a one blogger themselves doing it. And I'm getting that sense simply because, you know, graphically it's not that nice of a looking website. But maybe they have readership. I don't know. I can 
try to look that up. There's a lot of advertising, but that's how you make money online. But we've got a link then. They might have a good amount of traffic. Maybe they're a lo-fi kind of website, but they get a lot of traffic. Like Craigslist. Craigslist is ugly to look at, but it's one of the most popular websites in the world. Well, I do see HTM up on the address right here, but probably it's kind of a basic PHP, and it's also using the old HTML 4.1. And then if you look at PHP, I don't see any PHP calls in the code, but it does look like a classic site. And I can tell that because they're still using the capital letters. That's so 1990s. <laughs> but um, free advertising back to the client. That's the whole point. I'm looking on my webmaster tools here to see who's linking to me. Well, part of this process then, which I have in my handout, you're going to check on a regular basis. Not sure if I wrote it here, but I'm going to say over here on my notes, which I'll put in the <coughs> which I'll put in the folder, um, backlinks um, strategy. Check your backlinks. So this will be at Bing and Google at least once a month. You probably don't need to do it that often unless you've got a lot of traffic. But once a month is good, log in at the beginning or end of a month. Go to the screen, look at there, and then notice you've got a button to download it. So I would say download your backlinks report. And you're, it's going to give you basically an Excel spreadsheet. You're going to get this Excel spreadsheet, and you're going to follow links to check if good or bad like I was just doing right now I didn't know some of those links I followed the link I, I browse around and I thought these links seem good and I'll show you what to do with good links in a moment and I'll show you what to do with bad links in a moment but you want to check this once in a while what kind of links am I getting I'm compiling this spreadsheet and I can continue to add to it I can make notes on my spreadsheet because I can't make notes on this and honestly, this is a little cumbersome. Um, this All you can do is really look at them. You can't really do anything about them. But once you've exported it as a spreadsheet, you'll be able to open it in Excel and make notes and organize it alphabetically and all of that good stuff. You can do it in Google Docs. Microsoft gives you, actually, Microsoft gives you a free copy of Excel if you go over to office.com. Office.com. They have the paid one, of course, but then they've also got somewhere down here, Office Live, get started with online apps now. So you can go create a free Excel account and use it online. But after you've got your Keyword report, you know, it's just going to be a simple spreadsheet. You can make yourself a column of notes. Let me see right here. Good link. And that's right basically I'm going to say bad link. So good links, bad links, whatever. I can make notes, analyze. What's that? So, that, so that's basically just good to analyze your link. Yeah, this is so part of. This is part of uh, this is part of our modern SEO strategy. It's not just about the keywords and all of that. It's about checking: are they being effective? What links am I getting? Checking what's good and what's what's not good on our links. So yeah, checking them once in a while, because if you find a good link, download your links and compile them to a spreadsheet, review them, add notes and highlights taking advantage of backlinks. Now that you have backlinks report, you can create more authority for your site. The tactic is to link quality content to the links, that link, to your own site. What that is saying is, tweet about a positive restaurant review. On Facebook, post a link to a blog post that positively reviewed your product. So we're creating a feedback, feedback loop here. There's a blogger that wrote something positive. So I'm going to log into the Texcoco Twitter account and tweet, Hey everyone, did you read about our latest success? And we put a link to that blogger's blog. 
Well, I'm directing traffic to that blogger from my followers. Those people that go to that link then could read it. They could share it themselves. So I've directed traffic to them, and that's going to direct more traffic back to us because people could share that article, they could share another article if that other website has more articles to us. So basically a loop. I'm sharing stuff for other people to see so that other people can share, and that link takes them back to our link. So in the book, the strategy there is backlinks to backlinks. The more good content that is pointed to sites that link to you, the more your SEO rank could increase. This takes a lot of work, but could pay off. So I, I would go in and look at these inbound links, and I found, you know, one of the one of these right here, like DNA info. You know, I could possibly go on Twitter and, and write something like. Uh, our Magay plant technique is reaches coast to coast and tweet a link to this article which will cause our followers to go look at it and give them traffic and then our followers could further retweet it and share it causing more traffic back to our website because we've got a link back to our website Home Bar Basics. So this is uh, a bar website, and they're talking about this, and they're mentioning Barbados, and they're talking about spit-roasted meat, barbacoa, and that's a link back to the client. So it doesn't matter that it's not a Mexican food website linking back to our Mexican food website. It's a food-related website, you know, food and beverages, and it's relating back to our website in a good way because it's mentioning this history of this food, how it pairs with the drinks, for example, and it links back to the client and Latin food and all of that, so this is another good link. Um, I would again also think about how can I make a how can I make a Facebook post that capitalizes on this? This is already pre-written for us. I just need to think of some way to share it interestingly on Facebook. That'll drive traffic to them and drive more traffic back to us because we've got a link back to us. I'm trying to find then an example that's the opposite, an example that is a bad link. Because we also want to deal with bad links because bad links could weigh us down as well. Good links can increase our standing, bad links could decrease our standing. But the more good links you have, the more it offsets that. This one is a good one here where it's the 38 essential San Diego restaurants. Let me see, they update this every once in a while and this client has been increasing. This is from 2013, so there's probably a newer version of it, but in 2013, the restaurant was 23rd place, and it has been increasing. Here we go, 2016, here's the latest version of it. Let's see where the client is. Oops, 36. Well, they were increasing and they went down a little bit, you know, goes in cycles. But here's um, here's yet another um, unsolicited article from some other website about um, the client. And I could go 
in on uh, yeah, you know Pinterest or something and, and write uh, thank you San Diego reader for ranking us on your list and so I'm giving a free link and publicity back to the to the eater and then they've got a link back to us so there's that feedback loop of positive links Why Pinterest in particular? That was just one off the top of my head. I'm just saying any social media. I go to any social media and I want to share that so that they can reach more people. Okay, this one. I'm this one right away here. I'm I'm iffy. Yipit.com. Never heard of it before. Let's check it out. This is why you're going to review your links. Let's see what yipit.com is. Get coupons. All right, skip that. Yipit, every deal in your city. It's um, some sort of coupon website, maybe, but let's say it was an obvious spam kind of site. And obvious comes from, you'll realize what's obvious as you do this more often, but obvious sites usually are full of advertisements, very little relevant text. Sometimes the text is exactly from your website ripped off and put on their website. That's content scraping. What's that? They're stealing from Yelp. They might be stealing it from Yelp. So content scraping is that they're taking someone else's content, putting it on their site. Taking your content, putting it on their site. Let's say this is a bad link. You know, it seems to be like one of the many sort of like Yelp, Groupon kind of websites out there. Let's say it's clearly a bad website. That's when the next part of the strategy comes in. Bad backlinks. Mm -hmm. I remember reading a report that said webmasters will be out of, out of, uh, out of date pretty soon because everything's going to be going to someone else's content and developing for us, which is kind of like what that is, that you um, I, don't know. I, don't, I don't think it'll go that far. I think that that might have been an article to really catch people's attention because if, if it's going to be constantly shared, it has to be created from somewhere to start off with, and we have a paradox. You know, if, if everyone's sharing the content, it had to come, it had to be invented at some point. So there will still be people creating content, maybe. In one way, you can say, okay, webmasters are going away, but they're going to be replaced with content marketers, which is just another term of the same thing. People creating content to put online. I'm a webmaster, I'm making a website. No, I'm a content marketer, putting stuff on my website. Different name for the same thing. It, it was kind of focused that uh, more companies are deciding to go with just a Facebook page rather than their own website. That could be valuable, but it really then, again, depends on what you're trying to accomplish online. Because let's say this company goes to Facebook only. Great. Are you going to be able to sell your product from Facebook? Are you going to have simply call us now to hire us? That might be good enough. But if you need to show product descriptions and angles and reviews and all of that, that might not be good enough. So it could be a strategy to not use a website, but usually you do want to because you want your, the most control. And so you also want to be able to control your backlinks that are bad, and here's how we do it. Let's say I found a bad backlink. In Bing, there is a screen. There's a screen under the dashboard. Configure my site. Disavow links. And simply here, you start to tell Bing, these are bad websites. Don't take them into account when you're ranking my site. Don't group me in with them. Don't drag me down because of them. And we can do three ways. And really, there's only one good way to do this. What I mean at the top is you can say, OK, there's a certain page that I want you to disavow. So you would put in the address madsite.com slash blog slash mexican.html. So one page on badwebsite.com is the one that I want to tell Bing disavow it. That usually doesn't 
work because it's a, the whole ba the whole website's bad. They're not really going to learn their lesson, and j and and that one page is going to get taken down on bad website. They're going to make ten more bad website bad pages on their website to link to you. A higher level of this would be the directory. So let's say everything in the blog directory is bad. But again, it's a bad website. There's a slippery slope very fast that these bad websites are just bad through and through. It's not that one page is the, is the culprit or one section. It's the whole site. So usually what you'll be doing is you'll be setting the whole domain as blacklisted, saying that whole domain disavowed, like pick to fly. This is one of these ones that was a content scraper that was stealing our graphics. It was making a, a, a graphic search engine. Well, Google already does that, Bing already does that, Flickr already does that, Pixabay, there's plenty of bigger, more professional websites that do that. And this one was just browsing every website it can find, stealing the graphics and making a database of graphics. Worthless website, we didn't need their link, so we disavowed them. And now we don't get traffic from them and we don't get the uh, negative SEO. It's very straightforward here on, on Bing. You need to know what your bad backlinks are, however, and then you submit them. And it'll keep track of them, and then when you do it and other people do it, Bing will start to learn, okay, this is a bad website, and then you, you won't be bothered by them. Um, they're negative SEO. Yeah. So, um, like those bad links, will fall into that category by themselves, or is that something you have to put them the disavowal? Uh, you, you, we don't know exactly if other people have also disavowed that one, so it's still a good idea for you to do it. Um, what I'm saying is, like, like um, the like only way to get the links in your disavowed is for being to put them there, right? Yes. Okay. It doesn't do it automatically, really. I would go to the screen, you know, how we're doing it once, in a, once a month. Okay. Check it. If there's any new bad link, go in and disavow it and get rid of it. You don't want to do this to disconnect, for example, the link of your competitor. Your competitor might link to you, and yeah, they're your competitor and you hate them, but why would I take away their link? I'm getting a free link from some other site. So you don't want to do this simply to spite or to kind of like game the system. That could backfire too. You really just want to do this to disavow bad websites, spam websites, irrelevant websites, to tell Bing about them and so that they don't hurt your SEO. Because you could accidentally, especially if you do domain, you could disavow way too much and suddenly your traffic plunges. That's why the way to do it with Google is actually much harder. Let me get to Google in just a moment. The way to disavow with Google is a whole process where you almost have to write an essay and beg Google to disavow the link. Because with Google, they're the bigger search engine, and if you disavow the wrong link, that's going to really mess up your traffic. So we'll see how it is in a moment. But the way Google works is, there, I have not found a direct link to the Google disavow tool within the Webmaster Tools. There's like no front door to it. You have to know the password. You have to search on Google. Google this about tool, and you'll get a Google result that'll take you there to that address. I don't know if there's a direct link. I haven't found it. But that link is the link. And then it'll say, be careful. It'll warn you like two or three times. Be careful about disavowing. This could really hurt your traffic. And the way it works is not as nice as Bing, where you can simply say, these are the websites, nuke them you have to create a text file, a plain old notepad or text editor text file, not a Word document, a plain old text file, and you have to write line by line the names of the websites and a little note that you supposedly went and contacted the webmaster to disconnect the link. Wow. Now the spammers are never gonna get back to you, so it's okay for you to say, I tried to contact them and they never got in contact with me but you have to then write that yourself and when you're on that screen it'll tell you exactly what to write. We'll see it in a moment. But for Google it's more work because you could really hurt your traffic if you do it wrong. We're going to check it out now then. Any questions on Bing before we go on to Google? 
Yes. Well, what we did was we 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 worked one on one. I worked with everyone one on one to get that to work. So when we wrap up the day, we'll I'll go check yours out. I'm gonna go over to the Google Webmaster Tools first. Because we've got Bing Webmaster, it's all in one, and we've got Google Webmaster Search Console and Analytics. Both of these will give us different bits of data. So I'm gonna go look at Webmaster Tools. Go ahead then and go to google.com slash webmasters. Log in and then I'll show you what we're going to do google.com slash webmasters Going to sign into the search console. When you, when you sign into Webmaster Tools or Search Console on Google, you need to click on your site to view its dashboard. Then we'll have a link on the left, which is Search Traffic. And then we'll have a link that says Links to Your Site. They call it Links to Your Site instead of Backlinks. So I've logged in. I'm going to look at this client's site, so I'm going to click on it. On the left side, we've got search traffic, links to your site. Backlinks, inbound links, incoming links, links to your site. Click there. This will show it differently than Bing, but it shows here number of links, who links the most, your most linked content, how your data is linked. So different ways to show similar data. This is showing here yellow pages is linking a lot to the client. Trait, Foursquare, WordPress, yellow book, specifically to the home page, to the McGay plan, to the menu, in the question. So very similar to what Bing saw. And these are the keywords that it's seeing on the other person's site linking to you. They are often showing the keyword website or the keyword checkout, or the keyword Dexcoco. But if I want to then see in detail, I can click on any one of these sections. For example, who links? I'm going to click on more. It's going to show it like this. And then also download. Download this whole table. Download the latest links. So if you're doing this on a regular if you're doing this on a regular basis, you're going to maybe just download the latest ones instead of this the whole table over and over. Yes. I'm sorry. How do you get to this screen? Well, like I have here on my handout, you're going to log in and then you're going to go to your dashboard, search traffic, and then link to your site. What if it just says no data? If it says no data, it might be too new. You might have set it up too recently and it hasn't collected the data yet. So search traffic and links to your site. If you don't have links, then you just keep waiting. Or you're also going to do the other tactics of being active on the blog, being active on social media to get to start to get the ball rolling. <laughs> so on this one, I believe it's to me it's not as useful 
like if I'm looking at Thrillist.com, I want to see the actual pages. You, you are going to need to download it, and then once you download it, it'll show um, the detail. But the thing is that Google Webmaster is, or Google Search Console, it's nice to see some of your data here, but really Google Analytics is where I'm going to see most of my deep data. So I don't spend too much time on the Search Console here looking at these backlinks. It's kind of basic, not, not too detailed, pretty cumbersome. So I'm just showing you where you can get these on Search Console, but instead I'm going to show you on Google Analytics that's the place to get the more, the most data. So I'm going to move on from Search Console, but did everyone kind of find the, the, the place? This is the screen here. I don't use it too much. I don't check in on this too much. Uh, we'll go to Analytics. And then both for Analytics and Search Console, both of them have the same disavow tool. And I've got the direct link down here on page two. It's going to go directly, and it's going to tell you. Important info, which site are you disavowing? Read that information because it's an advanced feature, and it's going to ask you to create a text file like this. You're going to say, this domain is bad, here's my comment contacted owner of Shady, Shady SEO on 7112 to ask for a link removal but got no response. So that's what you're going to have to do with Google. You're going to also have to make a note, a comment that you tried. Simply uploading a list perhaps might not work. You have to show you're a good webmaster and you're trying. But I'm going to switch over to Google Analytics. And that's google.com slash analytics. So go to, let's go to google.com slash analytics, click the sign in and select regular analytics, not the premium one. I still haven't had a chance to look into it, what's so good about it. Has anyone else? Has anyone looked into what Google Premium, Google, Google Analytics Premium is? That's on my to-do list. Go to Analytics, sign in to the regular. You're going to see the various accounts. You probably just have one. And inside of an account, you've got a property, the main site, probably. So like this, there's that client. I don't know if I mentioned it in this class, but be careful about this. We made this mistake, so I'll show you this so that you don't make it. We have these various folders, which are accounts. We've got an account for that client. Our mistake was we had created an account for our company, and we then set up their website on our folder. And we want to move their website over to their own folder, but there's no way to do that. I've contacted... Uh, Google via email and phone, and they tell me that feature is coming. It doesn't work at the moment. We can't transfer your data from one folder to another. So Google can't do their own thing. And they've been saying that for years, that that feature is coming. I'm giving up hope on it. So what I'm saying is, when you make these folders, you're not going to be able to move this data out of the folder. It's in there. But we would love to move this client's data over to this client's folder and it doesn't doesn't hurt anything that it's in the wrong folder but just organization wise it's annoying and so you should have a website click on the the website that uh, you've got there within your folder you have all of this great data to look at we'll look at some of these briefly and then the backlinks Once you've got this set up, it's going to show you this data like
like this because it's divided into so many sections. By default, it took me to the audience section, audience overview. I have an acquisition overview, behavior overview, conversions, etc. I can go to real time overview and it'll tell me if there's anyone on the site at this moment. And it's saying that someone's on the desktop, someone's on mobile device. This is what had happened in the last 30 minutes. So, all of this information. How do you get the real time? On the left side, you've got a category of real time, and then you can click on overview. Oh. So I was looking, the first thing that it will show you is audience overview, and you have all of these subsections. So let's take a quick look here, audience overview. Here's what my traffic for this site looked like in the past 30 days. Ups and downs, we can maybe discern some strategies here, that on these particular days of the week, I might get more hits, so I might want to be more active on those days. Conversely, days where I have less traffic, I can put more effort to bring the traffic up, so that it's uh, steadier. That's one possible way to read this data. What's working and what's not. I can also know that I posted something on Twitter on this day and I got a spike in traffic, so it shows it works. On another screen I can see that in more detail. But here is within these 30 days, and obviously the longer you've got this set up, if we set this up for the past you know, 30 days or um, Let's say from November to January. It looks like that. So from this screen, we see these bits of data right here sessions, users, and page views. If you hover over these little boxes, they give you a little bit of info. So sessions, total number of sessions within the date. A session is the period, time, a user is actively engaged on your site. So someone visits your site, they go to a couple pages, they click on things, they're active on your site. They, call it, they, they count that as a session, that they're active on your site. Within that time period, that means that that was 7,000 users. It includes both new and returning users. So I can come back to the website 10 times, and it'll increase it 10 times here. It's not that one user gets counted one time. It lumps it together here. But on other screens, we can break it down. So here you get an overview. Returning users and new users, so we're getting a lot of new users within this time period. New people are learning about the business. Page views is related to that in that one user could view 10 pages. That's why this number is often very much higher, so 15,000 page views. Total number of pages viewed. Repeated views of a single page are counted. So if a person clicks refresh on their web browser 10 times on the one page, this counts it as 10 page views. On average, when a person visits, they're viewing about two different websites, two different pages on the website. They're spending about a minute and a half on the website, and there's a bounce rate of 66%. These numbers, depending on your site, may be great or may be terrible. Let me give you examples. This is a restaurant. Many of the things that people want to do on the restaurant website are order the food. So they're going to go over to the order site, place the order, and leave. That could be what the bounce rate would be there. The percentage of people that visit one page on the site and then leave. Um, that might not be so bad for this restaurant because they go directly. They might have bookmarked the checkout page on their web browser, and they just know to come back directly to that product and check it out to buy and then they bounce, they leave. That might not be so bad for that client. Let's say you are an author with many blog posts, many articles, and you've got that high of a bounce rate, that might be terrible. It means people are not reading your other blog posts. They read that one blog post and then they leave. High bounce rate. Mm -hmm. The bounce rate means 66% left. 66% like, left without seeing any other page. 
just the one page they entered. The page that they entered, and then they left that one page. Yes. Yes. What kind of website do you have? Do they get the information from your, from your website as soon as possible, such as a contact phone number or your rates and such? Yeah, so 91% might not be so bad if, they go, if they're going directly to the rates page. They get that info and they leave. That might not be so bad. But if you also have many instructional videos, that could be bad because then they're not staying around on your site to look at other things. Question. Um, so I have a blog, and I don't talk post often. Mm -hmm. but my bounce rate is eighty-seven. Is that because of not posting often? That's why people. Are not there could be one reason as well. You don't have any other things perhaps to look at. Someone reads one blog post and then they leave because you're not posting that often, so that there's not much else to look, to look at. So they leave after one article. Related to this is also the session duration. One and a half minutes. It could take easily one and a half minutes for them to visit the website, place the order, and bounce. And that, that might not be so bad, one and a half minutes. But if I'm a blogger and I write articles that should be taking about five minutes to read, and people are hanging out there only one and a half minutes, they're not reading my articles long enough. So that's also another thing to think about. What's good and bad? I don't know. It depends on your business. If I'm a blogger, that might be a terrible amount of time. If I'm a restaurant, that might be just fine. That's enough for them to actually order the product and leave. That's fine. Same thing with pages per session. If I'm a blogger, I want them to read many of my articles. One and a half, one and three quarters articles, not good because they're not reading anything. A restaurant, that's fine. They went to the buy page, they went to the checkout page. Done. Two pages. Yes. These uh, demographics are fascinating. I know we need to say this to It tells you the interest category of the users. How does it move? Our web browsers nowadays give away so much information. These cookies that are on our browsers, when I visit a website on Amazon and it saves a cookie that I looked at this hard drive, it saves it. And then Google Analytics looks at it. So everything that we're doing online is getting tracked, and that might sound scary, but it's, it's you can you can turn it on or off, but it's coming through, and it may be valuable for us as marketers, but it may be scary for us as a consumer. So that's under audience. You can further go in here, the language and the country. So the most traffic of the language is the US. There's some traffic coming from Russia, but I hate to say it, that's probably a lot of spam traffic. And then we've got Spanish, various flavors of Spanish. Uh, yes. So then we've got countries. Where's our traffic coming from? Most traffic from the US and Mexico and then Russia. Which unfortunately, I have to say, probably that spam. That's how mine is set up. The number one country is Russia. So then, when we go look at our backlinks, we're going to see where the where that Russian traffic is from coming from, and we're going to disavow those links so that so we can stop. Can you do it on a blog too? A blog like on WordPress.com? No, it's on Blogger. You should be able to, because Google owns Blogger, so there is there is that ability as well. We can give it a shot. City. So here we go. We've got Los Angeles and San Diego. This restaurant opened in Tijuana in 1990. And then in San Diego in about 2008, I think, or nine. And then uh, in Los Angeles in 2014. So now this restaurant is getting more traffic from LA than San Diego. After a year and a half or so, they're getting more traffic from LA than from San Diego being here for like five or six years. So what do I do with this data? That's, that's a little bit more up to you. If I know that I'm starting to get this traffic over from, um, from Houston, I could then figure out I'm going to post something on Twitter and target it to the Houston audience. I'm going to post something and target it to the Mexico City audience. So, like Facebook, if I couple this with Facebook, Facebook knows a lot about you too. You can create a post on Facebook and target it to people that are out of state, 
visiting San Diego that came from Mexico City. Because every time you log in and Facebook says, what did you do today? And we gladly answer that. We're giving so much information to Facebook to make a profile about us for us as marketers to take advantage of. Yeah, I did. Like, I would go on uh, Amazon and just search for something and then go to Facebook. And then Facebook's like suggested thing mm -hmm. that I just looked at. Yeah, those are the, those are those cookies that are following us. It's like they're chasing me. You sure you don't want to buy it now? Yeah, it, this is our modern web. What's that? Is that bad to you? I should go to this company and chase people. If you get something useful out of it, it's not bad. But if you start to get a lot of spam, then it might not be so good. So we won't look at all of these screens, but you should look at them because you can see what's your most popular web browsers. Browser. So Chrome and Safari. This is a funny story. A few years ago, some travel website got caught that if you visit your if you visited their website in Safari, the prices were a little higher than other web browsers. Because oftentimes, who's using the Safari web browser? Apple, Apple, Apple users. Apple. And Apple users who paid $900 for the basic laptop, they thought they can afford a little bit higher on our rentals. So when they got caught for it, they said, ah, that was a mistake in our code, we'll fix it. So I'm not saying you do this. I'm not saying you do this, but what I'm saying here is you can be able to see what everyone is is, is doing what kind of web browser? Android browsers increasing. Mobile Safari web browser, Microsoft Edge. So from Windows 10, that was zero hits a few months ago, of course, and now it's increasing. So that's showing there that Windows 10 users are coming on the site. I could possibly, if I'm more tech savvy, I can create some JavaScript that detects this and makes a pop up happen for certain people visiting the site. So for the for the very few Linux people that come to the site, I can make a pop-up app and it says, Welcome Linux user, here's ten percent off. Tell your Linux friends. Um, and how would you do that No time to talk about that. That's an advanced JavaScript thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's really good is the screen resolution so you can set up your website so that they can kind of all see it Because everyone always asks that question, how big should I make my website? I don't know. It's your website and it depends. When you look at screen resolution, this will tell you. A lot of the traffic is coming from relatively small screens. Yeah, that's what it is. So if my website is big in HD quality, it's not really the, mo the way most people are seeing it. There's HD, there's HD, but the biggest ones are like low quality screens. So all of this information is very valuable. Um, we can obviously spend a lot of time looking at this, but what I want to look at is the, um, the backlinks. That's going to give you a lot of good info as well. And this is where I spend most of my time, not on Google Webmaster or Search Console, on analytics. So over here I said, uh, click on your property on the left navigation, click on acquisition. Next click on refer, all referrals, and then you'll see sources. So here we've got acquisitions. All traffic referrals. This is basically you're getting referred from another website. Where did we acquire our link? We can see who's our audience, where did we acquire them from, and what was their behavior. Down here we can see all the trail that they took on our website. So guys right here, I know you're very excited about all of this, but could you keep it a little bit lower? So right here under acquisition, all traffic, I can say, okay, channels, show me a quote graphic of it, the sources and referrals. But this overview shows me here, Facebook, a lot of traffic, and just checking it quickly, some spam site. Website analyzer.info, to me, from my experience, sounds like a spam site. I would click to go view the site and really see what it is, but just gives me a gives me a bad feeling, such as also share button.xyz. So real sites. Facebook, Yelp, San Diego Eater. Right? 
So does that tell you the importance of Facebook and Yelp? Discover Los Angeles, the LA Times. Yes. If it just says something like social widget XYZ, is that a spam site? Mm -hmm. Probably. You know, unfortunately the dot XYZ doesn't give me a good feeling and I kind of like it. I want to get victor.xyz, but it sort of feels like, just by the name, share button, traffic to cash.xyz. That sounds so bad. I got two funny ones. I got two of them called Website Stealer. <laughs> website Stealer. Huh. <coughs> so maybe this might be an eye-opener for many of you, so you can definitely see the negative <coughs> links, and then we can disavow in a moment. But I might want to see, okay, well, great, what's this traffic that I'm getting from the LA Times? You should be able to click on any one of these, and this will tell, take you down directly to what the actual post is. This is coming from their story from 2014, and this one is from 2015. So two articles from the LA Times, the number of hits. This is new people, new users coming to it from there. That would bounce rate, very low bounce rate. They stuck around from that traffic. Stay on the site, all of it. Referrals. Channels. Channels is similar to that, but you can get like a higher overview. You've got all traffic, channels, referrals. Channels, the most of my traffic to this client is coming from organic search. <laughs> Second is direct, meaning that they had the link, they typed the link directly, or they had it bookmarked, and they went directly to a specific link. That's the second most amount of traffic. Third is a referral, which would be some other website referring them to our website. And then fourth is social. So all of that coupled together added up to four, five, six, seven. So, you know, about 8,000 8, sessions this month, 8,000 hits this month from all of these different channels. You would also have the channel of paid if you engaged in paid, and it would tell you there. And I believe there's also one more about email. If you're also engaging in email marketing, you would see a little pie chart or a little uh, section that is of of that. You can get a pie chart right here if you... There's so much data to look at. So here I just changed it on the right side. Instead of columns, I changed it to pie chart. The same sort of thing. Look for a little pie chart. And so here, out of most of my traffic is coming from organic. Not paying for placement on search engines, specifically Google. Biggest, second biggest piece of the pie, direct. So that could be directly from the link. And if I find a particular positive link, Cooking Channel TV, I can drill down and see that this is the Take Your Own Taco Trip. I can go vet that. I can click on it to go see the original link. Databases? Oh, better business. None of my, I don't think any of my clients at the moment are on Better Business Bureau, but I think it is a valuable thing because it's, uh, you know, it's a third. It's like real expensive, though, right? It's got like eight, nine hundred a year, right? Yeah, it does pay to be part of them, but they are supposed to be like a third-party watchdog that checks complaints about oh, yeah. you and follows up, and if you are accredited by them, you get a nice sticker and flyer that you can put up on the wall to show people you're accredited and all of that. So it's, it's a way to get accredited. It's not free, uh, but it could be valuable. I don't believe any of our clients at the moment are Better Business Bureau accredited, but in theory, I, I do recommend it. 
So I'm looking for the client here. <laughs> we'll go down on Broadway and go to the restaurant and, and tell them Victor sent you. Discount? Um, maybe ask nice. So one of these is supposed to be the client. And so this is a link back up to the client and so more traffic. So that's always good. Probably somewhere else. I'm not quite finding it. But let's say this this is one of these positive links. So again, I would go on Twitter and I would say Taco Trip Advice from Cooking Channel and share this post to our Twitter or Facebook or Pinterest or whatever, Google Plus. Get more traffic to their post and therefore get more traffic back to us because we've got a link here somewhere. I was just don't control how to type it. Yeah, I'm not finding it. It's it, The problem with this site is that you have to then load up the next slide and then you have to control F each slide. So it's in there somewhere. But um, this is a traffic. It, it, it got us five hits in this time period. It's been all new users, but then the bounce rate is really high and didn't spend too long on the site. But there could be more traffic. So I saw that there was a bunch of bad links over here, such as websiteanalyzer.info. If I want to disavow, if it's coming from something bad, then you still want to disavow it because that bad traffic is not going to serve you any good. And uh, once you take care of that, you can start doing the other tactics to start increasing your good traffic like creating infographics, posting on other people's sites, getting on Twitter, and all of that to start to get good links. So this is a little bit of a process, but then I've discovered at least one bad link. I'm going to go over to the disavow links on my handout. I'm going to say for this particular client, I want to disavow on the handout. And then uh, I want to say, let's disavow this. And again, it's going to ask you to, to add a little document. We've already added one sometime last year. So I want to download my last file and add to it, and then upload it. Google will look at it. Who knows if in days or weeks or whatever. But then eventually that bad site will stop getting any attention from Google, and it, and it won't be detrimental to me. So I would click download. Okay, so you were talking about how you have to write a little essay, and I don't think that you're wrong. That's not the case. No, I'm just trying to see if it's an allowance or good. No, look what I did. I did write a comment, oh. and then I say, what's the bad site? And then buttons for websites doesn't show up anymore. Oh, now so that was Google's notations. Mm -hmm. that being said. No, 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 that was my notation okay. to Google. Yes. Exactly. So we did this one previously. Mine has one that we've done it before. So I downloaded and noticed the date right there. So we, I downloaded the old version of it, and now I'm going to add this new spam site and re-upload it. I'm going to save it with today's date. Over here, I'm doing it live. Today's the 20th. You know, think of the notes that you gave us. Could you copy and paste how you did that in the notes thing? How it forced it in? Uh, yeah. The example is in here. It shows it to you, but I can put it in there, sure. Um, 
So what was that bad site again? Websiteanalyzer.info. Comment here. I won't do them all because I do have to write a little bit about them, but uh, here's an example here. I can upload this as many times as I want, keep adding to it, so I'm going to save that. Simply this is the format, and it shows you on the website when you're going to upload it, the format. But you have to write a comment with the little pound symbol, the domain, colon, what's the domain, and again, you're going to really take out the whole domain, not one page on the domain because the whole site is bad. And I'm telling it here, so obviously this is not as easy as as Bing, but it's not super complicated. I'm just writing a basic text file. Notice I wrote this text file. I gave it that, that name. It doesn't matter the name, but I'm writing this is our link, Sakias Texoco with the date dot text. Just a basic text file, not Microsoft Word. Just a basic text file. Very basic instructions here to Google. Um, they're going to look at automa automatedly or maybe with a person. I don't know if it's going to take days or weeks or months, whatever, but I'm telling Google this is a bad website because I don't see buttons for website listed on my, on my report anymore. They took care of it. And so I'm going to do the same thing for websiteanalyzer.info and all these other ones later, but I'll just do one right now. My link to that disavow is right on the handout, so then I'm going to choose the file that I just edited. Submit it. Overwriting, I mean, uh, submitting this file will override the existing one. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just keep adding new spam sites to the existing file so that it keeps, keeps track of the bad spam sites. So it says you successfully uploaded a new disavow file. It contains three domains and zero URLs. Zero single pages. It's three domains. So great. I'm done. It'll process it and then when I log back in at some point I won't get that listed there anymore because it's spam and it doesn't matter. Like I said earlier, it doesn't... Uh, I don't exactly have a number about that. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time, sometimes a long amount of time. Not exactly sure, but usually when I check month to month, it, then it, it does it. So sometime within a month seems to seems to get it done. And that's what you need to do. That's your. That's going to be your strategy. Where I was writing these notes here, your backlink strategy. Check your backlinks once a month. Download your report. Follow the links to check if good or bad. If good links, my term is is that I say you you're going to hype your links, and by that I mean that you're going to. Like I said, tweet about their nice article. You're going to Facebook about their nice article. You're going to keep sharing their good, their good things about you. You're going to hype your content, their content, to help bring more traffic back. If it's a good link. If it's a bad link, you're going to disavow. Once a month is good to get started with with that. If you've never done it before, it might seem like several steps, but remember I've got that handout. I'm recording all of these lectures. I don't think it's difficult. I think it's complicated, and something that's complicated is not necessarily difficult. It's just a lot of steps, perhaps. And we do this for the clients. You might learn a lot of things. I didn't know I had this traffic. Let me take advantage of it. I didn't know I had this bad traffic. Let me take care of it. Maybe that's why I'm so low on the search results. I've got too many spam sites linking to you. And unfortunately, that's something you're going to need to deal with more and more because anyone can create any website. The .coms are taken, but you can get that brand new shiny .xyz. 
that dot ninja dot guru dot arrow all of these brand new sites out there so now there's even more opportunity for spam sites to create for spammers to create spam sites now that all the dot coms are getting taken there's a brand new land rush for xyz and dot ninja and dot guru and dot apartment all of these new ones and so this whole seo concept this could be a full-time job too as I said, I'm part of this company, we do this for clients, we have various clients, we check up on this every month, we deal with this, and it's an ongoing thing because the spammers, they can automate this a lot. They can write a program and it'll automatically go send out emails to a hundred websites. It'll automatically make a thousand links to all of these sites. Uh, the reason, One of the reasons why these spammers might be linking to a bunch of sites is because then at a certain point they're going to want to sell that domain and show a potential buyer, we've got 10,000 links. Why not buy this website with built-in links? And some people will buy it, but then they're buying junk. They're buying spam sites that, that uh, Google's going to take them out. And they spent $5,000 on that site, and it's going to be worthless when Google gets around to, to taking them out. Yeah. Twitter's big on that too. I create a website, I create a Twitter account and I follow 10,000 people so I can get 8,000 followers and then I'm going to sell that account to someone with a built-in 8,000 followers. Mm -hmm. But all of that violates Twitter's terms of service and if you get caught, the, sh the account is shut down. Mm -hmm. and it goes your money for buying those followers or accounts with lots of followers. Mm -hmm. So I think that's it for the moment. Um, we were looking at our webmaster tools a little more in depth, talking about the concepts of backlinks, and really it's, it's an easy answer, but a harder implementation. The easy answer is create, create good content. That'll bring links back to you. The implementation is the harder part because I have to think of something to write or a video to create or, you know, a PowerPoint to design and then go market it on Twitter or my LinkedIn or Google+. But as you build on top of that little by little, you're going to start getting traffic. You know, how hopefully relevant traffic. And then take care of the irrelevant traffic, hype the relevant traffic, and that all feeds into itself. And then you're going to get traffic to your site and whatever it is you're trying to do on your site. Sell tacos, book a table, get a, you know, request a quote, or simply people reading your, 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 your scathing political rants for the fun of it. Any general questions? So what did you do with the link? Is a good site and you went in and you just... I found this good site, I copied the link, and then I went on Twitter and shared it. And I said, you know, thank you, LA Times, for featuring us. You know, some sort of way to get more attention to that link. That works as well. People like, people like to get their ego stroked. So if we have a link from some, you know, famous blogger here, and we wrote and said, we're so honored to be on John... Uh, John K. Smith's top five list. Thank you. And then John K. Smith is on Twitter and sees it, and he's got a thousand followers. He could retweet that, feeding his ego, and then going on to get us more views, more traffic. So we'll have some lab time now if we need any individual help or so. I'll turn the printer back on if you'd like to print. We'll have one more day of class next time. Uh, and we'll learn a little more SEO. Um, this is where we've learned all of these concepts. We're going to apply a few now directly to our websites. So we'll log on to our websites. We'll talk about adding the long tail keywords and all of that. If you've got your login for your website next time, we'll put it to good use. That's it for the moment, and see you next time. <laughs>